everybody today, some faces uh, I haven't seen, some have seen. Um, worship was awesome today, and that's what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about worship, and um, we know who we worship. Amen. Um, worship was great, and uh, seeing the team up here. ministering, Sharia ministering. Um, it just, it overjoys me. I, I, I'm, I'm a crybaby. <laughs> I'm a big old crybaby. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you know now. Okay. But uh, I, I sit close to the tissue. <laughs> you know, my heart is just overjoyed and, 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 and I become overwhelmed um, with the goodness of God. And with what he does in the lives of those who commit themselves to him. Amen. 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 Um, Amen. Preach that. <laughs> as I said, that's another. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, today uh, we're going to uh, turn to John chapter four. Um, it's a pretty known passage of scripture that, that we hear um, Jesus uh, at the well. Uh, Jacob's well with the uh, Samaritan woman. And I'm going to start there. And, um, <clears throat> so, Jesus said to her, verse 21, and I'm reading out the New King James Version. Uh, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we, uh, we know what we worship, son. Um, for the salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Amen. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is his spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I, I was I was um, in my time with the Lord and um, I was reading this, you know, I just kept reading it over and over. And the things that stood out to me is is that he made the Samaritan woman almost aware of her ignorance of what she was worshiping. Mm -hmm. um, he said, well, you, you don't know what you worship. <laughs> we know what we worship, but you don't really know what you worship. Uh, you, have, you have some traditional things that you, you might have gathered along the way uh, that have taught you how to worship, but you don't, you don't fully know them like we do. You know? mm -hmm. um, so you can have tradition and even grow up in church. Um, be aware of how church works. Um, but still not fully, fully know the Lord. There's more. There's always more um, to learn. Even for me today, there's more. Um, I'm scratching the surface. I know there's deeper, a deeper level of the Lord that, that um, I have to come to know. And um, you know, some of my past, I grew up, my grandfather was a pastor um, in Compton, California, in Los Angeles. Um, and I listened to him preach all the time. You know, I grew up there. The whole family was a family church. I mean, the whole choir was a family. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, know, you know, 
Grandma sat over there, and I sat with Grandma because I was getting in trouble a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's something that I that I grew up in. So, you know, I was around it, you know, but I didn't fully know. I didn't. I didn't fully understand. You could be uh, come. You know, for me, it was as a child. It could be someone as a a teenager or a middle aged person, however it may be. You could be that person that that um, you know. You, you're around church, you hear church things, but you still there's still more that you need to come and know about the Lord, to fully know and acknowledge him as who he is. And, and, uh, and, uh, and in that, you'll learn to worship more. Uh, life, worship is a life. It's not just singing these songs. I love singing these songs, but you know what? If I didn't go through half the stuff I went through in my life, it wouldn't be a, such a... Uh, uh, that does it. Right, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's an experience attached to your praise mm -hmm. and your worship. Praise God. Um, Amen. You know, knowing the church song, but then when you're not at church, knowing the Lord's voice, <laughs> knowing when the Holy Spirit is telling you, yeah, you need to stop that, mm -hmm. or um, you know, let's just keep going, you know, but you need to get closer. To me. You know, you didn't spend as much time doing this or that, right? Knowing his voice um, as you walk as you walk this out. Um, uh, my life took a turn um, growing up, um, and I found myself in a gang, and from there on, I found myself in prison number of six times um, and then following prison drug addiction um, those things are hard to go through um, now I say that I thank God for my affliction because because I was afflicted I I um, I now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't play. <laughs> we don't know. Get you a little work, that's it. You know? <laughs> uh, play no games. Um, but I want to share a couple of times, you know, some times when I was in prison because, you know, like I said, I grew up in church, but I didn't, I didn't fully understand. Um, uh, that's because I wasn't totally committed to understanding. Um, and, but there were times when I was I was in jail, and I, I was this the first time I went to jail. I wasn't supposed to come back. I wasn't supposed to be here today. And I'll make a long story short because we don't have a lot of time. I don't know how much time I have. Okay, as much time as you want. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't supposed to come back. Um, that was it. Capital punishment. Put it that way. Um, was involved. Um, and this was due to my gang affiliation and gang. Lifestyle. Um, so capital punishment was that was what was supposed to happen. Praise God, it didn't happen. That wasn't what was what God had planned for my life. And you know what? I had a mother telling me that in my ear too on the phone. Like, oh, God had planned for your life. You know, like that. You know? <laughs> like, don't look good from here, mama. But, uh, <laughs> you know, because I got to do this right now, mom. I'm up in here, you know. But you know. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, thank God I had her. So, you know, like, that's that's what I say. You know, I had the godly mother still there in my corner. Um, she understood. She didn't desire. All she could do was pray, though, know, after a certain amount of time. All she could do was pray. Um, but times times that I was in prison, um, you know, I had her. I mean, she gave me a, a Isaiah chapter 40. I think I shared that with Sharia mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Uh, be, uh, be not dismayed, for I am yeah. with you. Uh, you know, um, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Um, I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. You know, she was just continually feeding me things that would give me faith, you know. And she wanted to let me know that, you know, on, the, on one side you're in there doing this, but on the other side you need to remember who you are in God. You're a child of God. Yeah. You know, she kept she kept strengthening me in the faith, um, even though I was outside of the faith. Amen. Um, It reminds me of uh, uh, 
He reminds me of, of Samuel's mother. Uh, that's why I look at my mom was like Samuel's mother. Uh, she had a lot of faith. Well, she went to the tabernacle and she prayed and she prayed because she was she was going through uh, uh, a lot of things in her household. And um, uh, but she prayed and you know at the, you know God uh, blessed her. He uh, blessed her with a, a son. His name was Samuel. So I was in when I was in um, in jail prison. I was I was uh, it was just something I was always I had my mom and I would always be led to a Bible. Um, there was even a, like a, a bad Bible study. I say a bad Bible study because the people who was in the Bible study was like <laughs> pretty rough, you know what I mean? Like you know, like you really serve the Lord? No, you're not really serve the Lord, but they, they still wanted to keep the Lord in their life, you know, in their own way. You know, kind of, uh, that's that worshiping, but not knowing who you worship. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you don't know who you worship. Mm -hmm. If you knew him, you, you, you wouldn't go do what you're going to do after this Bible study. Yeah. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but then it, I would get alone on my bunk, and, you know, I'm reading, and I'm just reading it. And you know what? You know, the same crybaby would happen there. I would be there reading, and it was just touching me, you know. The word jumping out at me, convicting me, and, and um, uh, strengthening me. Um, I get in trouble, uh, I'll be in the hole, you know, because fighting or whatever. And then next thing you know, I, you know, I, I'd be reading the Psalms, you know, and I started declaring them Psalms. I found myself, I said, I found myself declaring the Psalms while I was sitting on the prison, on the, in the hole on the floor, reading it. I was declaring it over my life because I was in the midst of my enemies, believe me. That's what I tell you. <laughs> so they were all, all around me. I mean, walk out the door, there you are. You know, and uh, so um, I learned how to declare the word of God. You know, the Lord was like teaching me as I went. Like, here, a little bit. Um, a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, There's other times uh, when I was uh, in prison where I watched, you know, you know, I would try to start kind of, I mean, the word was impressing on my life so much that I would try to, um, I would start to find myself speaking it out a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when, you know, when, when, when the Lord, the spirit of God is moving in your life, it, it, it starts making you go against what's around you mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, right. it's, a, it's a fight there. Yeah. That's, That's the right. word, the word says that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, there was that time when, um, you know, I started trying to, you know, hey, you know, um, you know, the Lord is good, this and that, you know, I'm blessed, brother, you know, you know, go get my child, <laughs> you know, go sit down and eat, you know. Um, and, you know, it just doesn't have to be jail. You can, you can, you can be, you can be at work. It doesn't yeah. matter. God, the Spirit of God will work the same way in you wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Wherever you are in your life, the, the, when the Lord is dealing with you, and He's, you know, God is drawing you to the things of Christ yeah. to be a part of your life, then He'll start to move. Absolutely. Uh, no matter where you're at, you know? Yeah. You could be at the country club. Yeah. And that's, you, know, you, you, you know, you've been reading that Bible, you've been in the Word, and God's been speaking into your life. You don't even realize it. Yes. You know, probably not as much as it's going to show you because you're going to, you know, somebody's going to say something, you'll be like, well, wait, the Bible says this. It's going to come up. The Holy yeah. Spirit going to bring it back up. Yeah. So I would, I would be walking amongst people um, uh, when I was incarcerated. And, um, this would begin to happen. And so from that, people would, would start to, you know, think you're weak in there. Mm -hmm. Start to think you're weak, you know, you right into the Bible. And you're scared or something like yeah. So... <laughs> Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, it, it was just that the Bible was flowing out of me because I was in it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it was beginning to come out of me. Um,
kind of scripture is, uh, I'm going to, scripture in Samuel, the third chapter, is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. So as I was in prison, uh, yeah, it's, I would get to the scripture. Uh, when I was in, I was in prison, uh, I was just coming to, to know the Lord through His Word. You know, I, He was calling me, but I I couldn't hardly hear Him because I was so wrapped up in what I was doing in there. Uh, felt like I needed to survive as well as this, so I would, you know, I would take a little bit of the Word. Um, um, but I wasn't fully committed to the Word of God. I wasn't. Uh, I was still. Trial and offense. Um, you know, Samuel it says, Now Samuel, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was uh, the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Hmm. Samuel, Samuel also, uh, you know, he his mom, like I said, Hannah, she was a, a warrior for God, and uh, she she made a vow to God and she she honored her vow. She Gave her son to, to Eli uh, at the temple and uh, catch you later, son. You know, she <laughs> came up every because <laughs> she said, If you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. Yeah. Right. you that's what she, she prayed to, to the Lord. If you I give me a child, child, I will give my child yeah. back to you. Yeah. I will offer him up. You know, we should pray that some of our children, you know, yeah. Lord, keep our children, Lord, we, you know, uh, we'll give them to you. Yeah. We should yeah. give our kids to the Lord because. Um, in the world we live in today, True. there, True. there are so many ways that you know they could go wrong, um, and they need to know what's right. Amen. Um, so Samuel, you know, I'm gonna get out of the experiential stuff I was talking about and, and just you know get into the word again. Um, Samuel, um, he had to he he was ministering already in the tabernacle. He had the linen and the reading. No, read, read Samuel. Uh, the first, uh, second chapter, second and third chapter, first, second, third. Read the whole thing. Why not? Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> he was already ministering. He was there, you know? So, you know, before before this verse, it tells you that he was ministering. He was already there, being trained in a way, you know? So it's like he was at church, like I was, you know? And watching, watch, I was watching my grandfather, but he was watching the priest, Eli. And uh, he was being trained there. And but then, then you get to verse seven here, and it says, "Now Samuel <laughs> did not yet know the Lord, huh. uh, nor was the word of the Lord revealed to him. So he didn't have the word revealed. There was no revelation of, uh, of the word of God. And there was there was no um, he didn't know. He, he you know so he was just following, which is how my mom led me. I was just following you, okay? Her faith kind of was strengthening me." I was I was kind of leaning on her faith, uh, and, it, and it but it turned out well. Um, Amen. Samuel still had to come to know God on his own. Um, yeah. He still had to. He still, even though he was there, he was you know he at church every Sunday. But you you know I I was reading my Bible, but I still had. To come to know God on my own. Yes. Amen. So yeah, that's what's gonna keep you. Amen. When people are going to the left, you're gonna say right. When uh, when you're all alone, that's what's gonna you, you know, now us in this the time of grace. And we have the Holy Spirit, you know, nurturing the Spirit in our times uh, with the Lord. That's what's going to keep us um, going. That's what's going to keep us um, solid in the Lord and standing on the rock uh, is uh, knowing the Lord, knowing God. Amen. Amen. Um, if, you, if you read the story of Samuel, um, God said, uh, Samuel. Speak to me. Samuel got up and he ran. He, he ran to um, Eli. Like, what's up, Eli? You know? Yeah. And um, Eli was like, what? Man, what are you doing here? 
And he like, man, I thought you called me. And uh, Eli was like, no, man, I didn't call you. No, don't lay back down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he did that twice. And on the third time, um, he he said, man, hold up. This must be the Lord talking to him. You know, um, and that's, you know, sometimes with us, you know, we, we uh, you know, it's, it, he said, this, you know, it must be the Lord talking to him. If you read the story. And then he said, next time, next time um, you hear this, I want you to say, speak, Lord. Speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, it's like us, you know, we're, we're walking with the Lord, you know, or we're walking towards the Lord. Uh, and, you know, you walk towards the Lord, but you fully don't know his voice. So, you know, you, you, you know, I see people like this outside, they come like say something about the Lord, but it's really not, you know, you know, it's not really exactly from the Lord. You know, you know, so, you know, sometimes we may need to encourage them. Next time you, you get that, you hear that, I want you to go get your Bible. <laughs> yeah. And I want you to say, speak, Lord. Yeah. You know, yeah. speak to me through your word and, and lead them, you know, to the oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, he had to come to know the Lord's voice. And um, we come to know the Lord's voice as we live out our lives with him. Um, as we walk with him and as we uh, um, know his word, we get to know his word, we understand his heart, we understand uh, his opinions, what he would do, what he would not do. Uh, we know him through the word and we know him through the experiences of those who have gone before us. You know, that's like the scripture says from faith to faith, Romans 1.17. Um, I'm going to touch on that a little bit. Um, so back to John chapter 4. Um, Jesus told uh, the woman, we know what we worship. Um, they, know, they, they know what they worship. Jesus could say that because they had the scriptures. They had the word of God. They had the testimony. They had from Moses to Malachi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had God speaking through his prophets. They had all of the scriptures. They had everything about God. They had every victory that David had in the Lord. They had every um, every failure, not just that Israel had went through. Um, they had all these things. So truly, they knew they were worshiping. They knew they needed to get to, to, to the temple with that sacrifice every year. <laughs> we're not right. Thank God we don't have to bring uh, a, a lamb or an animal to uh, be sacrificed. Christ did that for us. Uh, Christ is the burnt offering. Uh, Christ um, paid that price on the cross. So uh, Romans 1 16, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and for it is the power of God for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. Mm -hmm. So it was for the Jew first. Uh, it came to um, to the Jews, the word of God. Actually, the gospel, Pastor Rez gave us the gospel in Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, it was last Sunday. Last Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Um, so the gospel of God is the same. He's, he's the same. He just said, I got to come do this for you. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, there is no hope. You're going to continue to, to um, bump your head. If, if, you know, and, and if we don't take advantage of what God has done for us through Christ, then there's, there's no hope. We have to grab a hold of, of, of what Christ did on the cross. Yeah, thank you. We have to do that. We have to grab a hold of that so that we can... Um, uh, we could make it, make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Romans one seventeen says, "For in it, which is the word of God, they're speaking about for in it, the righteousness of God um, is revealed from faith to faith." Um, 
I have an example. Uh, and this this is gonna go more towards worship because I know this is I said you know we know who we worship, but it, I should have probably named it um, the the road to worship. You know, like <laughs> on the road to worship, right? Um, so David uh, was a righteous king. We know uh, from the scriptures he was the only righteous king in Israel and right? Judah. Um, And he was a worshiper. He worshiped the Lord, man. Um, he danced before the Lord. And he wasn't your average king. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, he was filled with something that everybody else wasn't filled with. And that was the Holy Spirit. Uh, the prophets were filled with, you know. Or quote me, but the prophets were filled and others were. But he, as the king of Israel, he had something that no other king displayed. You know, I don't read about any other king that danced his way in when they was carrying the, the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved the Lord. He desired the Lord. Uh, his heart was for the Lord so much that he would not even touch God's anointed. He, he, he was not selfish. He wasn't, he, 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 um, he desired others more than, um, he desired God to deal with others. You know, he, he didn't desire to touch God's money. Um, in, that's a lesson for us, too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, in love for one another. You know, we, we've all been, you know, if, you, if you've if you accepted Christ as your Savior, if you're walking in the Lord, you know, um, if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, that's an anointing from the Lord. And that anointing is 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 something that I will, I will not I just want to nurture it. That's why I love Pastor Russ. He does he nurtures our he nurtures us. Amen. He nurtures what what it is that God is trying to do with us. So, yes. um, so that you know we could be do, doing what God has called us to do. Amen. Um, Amen. And David respected that. He he would not he wasn't gonna touch that. You know, and I take that as a lesson for myself. Like I I. Um, truly, uh, I'm sensitive to what God is doing in your life uh, and leading you uh, uh, throughout your life and in your life with him. You know, everything that he's doing in your life is special. It's important. Um, and uh, it's to be honored. You know, I honor God by honoring you because uh, I know God is doing something in you. David would not touch... Uh, God's anointed. Um, he was a worshiper. Um, he used, he, you know, he, he had the strings in the heart. I mean, Saul had an evil spirit, and his, his plan calmed the evil spirit, you know. Mm -hmm. That was an anointing on David's voice that allowed uh, him to penetrate through a man's soul into his spirit um, and comfort him. In 2 Samuel, 22nd chapter, 47 verse, David said, the Lord lives. The Lord lives. Amen. You are playing, the Lord lives. Yeah. Yeah. He was wanted you to know the Lord lives. Yes. He wasn't just like, the Lord lives. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord lives. Yeah. Don't you know what he just did for me out here on the battlefield? Yes. yes. When everybody was against me. When everybody was when, when, when everybody was coming against me, when everybody doubted me, yeah. when everybody said it wouldn't happen, the Lord lives. Yes. Amen. That's why his worship was good. His worship was awesome. I would have loved to have been there. I'd have been right by. Yeah, the Lord lives. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Blessed be my rock." Prison. Let God be <laughs> exalted. <laughs> the rock of my salvation. He is the rock of my salvation. Firm. Amen. I can put my trust in him firmly and see deliverance. Salvation, deliverance. The same thing. Mm -hmm. Salvation, deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see deliverance from drugs, from alcohol, Bless from gangs, from, from, from lust, from, from everything. God can become our deliverer, yes. our salvation. 
See, this is why I sing. Well, I be, you know, oh, like that. <laughs> yeah. because I watched him do it, and I can say, the Lord lives. Yes. Amen. I can lift my hand and say, the Lord lives. Yes, he does. Yes. You need to know who he is. You need to get to know him if you don't know. You might be a little far off, but he's there. He wants you to come closer. Mm -hmm. The Lord lives. Amen. Yes. Everyone in here. I know your testimony, your testimony, yours. You know yours? <laughs> the Lord lives. Yeah. The Lord lives. And it's a testimony that shows um, everyone that has known you that the Lord lives. Amen. Like Paul said, we're written epistles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every time you walk through the door and they knew which you were, but now you're not, yes. the Lord lives. Amen. 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 You walk into the victory. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, Jesus. Psalms 2251. I mean, not Psalms, but Samuel. I like Samuel. If you read the book of Samuel, the 22nd chapter, you have David's songs of deliverance. In, in the book of Samuel, you know, as well as we know, he, he's there in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. In, in um, Samuel, in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, this 22nd chapter, the 51st verse, it says, He is the tower of salvation to his king, and he shows mercy to his anointed. Oh, Amen. that's good. Amen. He shows mercy to his anointed. Now, I wonder, like, that, the Lord, you know, the Lord calling us for a long time before we realize he's been calling us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like Samuel. Yeah. Long time, you don't even know. But the Lord has been calling you. He just wants to call you. He's calling you into his love. He's calling you into a, a, a future in him. He, he, he's, he, he, wants, he don't want you to, to go to hell. <laughs> he doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want you in hell. He loves you. He loves what he's created. He loves what he's done. And how we we follow him and procreate, and he loves us. He loves it all. It's all good. Um, but we don't know when God is always calling us. Sometimes we don't fully understand, but he is. And that's why it's important to fully, to get in there and get more and more committed to, to the Lord. Take steps more and more. It may not be but just, you know, step at a time. But continuing to stay in him, continuing to, to acknowledge that um, your goal, and your goal is to be in him. Yes. Amen. Totally. Amen. Uh, we have a merciful God. He's, man, we don't understand grace. And if you want to fully understand grace, go read the book of Ezekiel. Um. Read the book of Ezekiel. Man, me and Ian, we've been, we, I've been playing that they're like 40 chapters, 48 chapters. Mm -hmm. Most of it is not good. Yeah. <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. Not good. Yes, go. um, Make you scared. I was like, whoa, man. But when, when, when I was listening to it, I really, I began to know God's heart, his ways. You know, when I, when I, when I was listening to it, I'm like, God, man, you know, this is truly who you are. But and you, I, I did so much, like, you know, I can't help but say I'm the same way. But now I stand in his grace and in mercy. He's had grace and mercy on all of our lives. Amen. The amount that we can't even understand. We, we really can't understand it. But if you look at something, you know, I mean, some of the things here in the Word of God, you see that um, that His grace is 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 is, is, uh, is wonderful. It's wonderful. It's a uh, it's truly what's keeping us, man, for Him to just even be amongst us because He shows you His true side, His righteousness, His righteous judgment. You know, He shows you these things, but then He shows us. Um, we, we come into him through grace. So we kind of don't see it all. Until you start to read the word. 
Mm. Right? Then you start worshiping, you worship more. Yeah. You can worship from that, that position too of knowing what God has saved you from. Yes. We worship because he's the God of our salvation. And we all know him as the God of our salvation. He saved us all out of something. We all were somewhere when he called us. Yeah. We were somewhere, we were doing something, um, and he saved us. We responded to um, the, the gospel of salvation. We worship God because he has delivered us out of the hands of the enemy. Salvation denotes the whole process by which man or woman is delivered uh, from all that will prevent his attaining to the highest good that God has for him. Mm. Now that sound like Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross. Mm -hmm. he, he, he did it for us on the cross because he wanted us to attain to that which he has for us that's good. Mm -hmm. It's for our good. Amen. And the actual enjoyment of that good. Pastor said the joy of the Lord Talking about the joy of the Lord today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That uh, was your quote. He said that the joy. He said was the the joy of the Lord. The joy in us, inside of you. It's your strength. It's your strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Psalm sixteen eleven says, "You will show me the path of life, and your presence is the fullness of joy." Mm -hmm. <laughs> At your right hand. Our pleasures forevermore. <laughs> God delivers us and fills us with joy. Like, I feel it all the time. <laughs> I feel it. I love the Lord for that, man. I'm like, Lord, Lord, man, thank you. Uh, thank you um, for this new man that I am today. Um, thank you. For your joy, man. It's a joy that's that's just just full of strength. You know, it, it's a lot. It's a fruit of the spirit. It's the fruit of the spirit's at work in us. Mm -hmm. uh, Galatians five twenty two. Joy is one of the fruits of the spirit, but we but we have a lot of them at work in us. Uh, we don't realize it, you know. But yeah, I've been coming to realize that. Like, man. And it just, you know, it, it makes me worship God with more of an understanding of who God is and what he does mm -hmm. uh, and how he does it in us. Um, that's just awesome. It's awesome to me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it makes me stand in awe of him and, and how this could happen. You know, how it could happen. You know, I, I look at everybody and I'm like, man, you know, I see the Lord working in you and that work in you and I just smile, you know. Um, inside, there's all everybody is just a walking testimony of what God can do. When you lift your hands to the Lord, when you when you're when you're singing out to the Lord, you're crying out to the Lord. You know, it's like living this inside my heart because I begin to see all the testimonies. Uh, I, I, it all just mixed together. Every testimony in the Word of God, and then your testimony, and I see God still at work. God is alive. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He lives. Amen. That's how I put you to sleep, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and I'm almost, I'm almost done here. Uh, almost done. Uh, so, yeah, we're, how long are we? Okay. Um, in John 23, John 4, 23, uh, Jesus said, uh, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. The Father is seeking Our God, the God of heaven and earth, the God who created everything that you enjoy every day and the means to make it, <laughs> is seeking you. He's seeking you. When I, when I read this, I was like, wow. Because like, who am I? So 
why even God wants to see. <laughs> Obviously, you know, now I know that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so our God sent Jesus to the punishment we deserve. In pursuit of all them who uh, would worship before him in spirit and truth. He made the way. He sent Christ mm -hmm. to die so that you could come even when you mess up. Even when you ain't, you know, you're still trying to get that thing right. He sent Christ to die on the cross so that you could still worship. <laughs> it's morning over morning. You know, that, that, that develops a morning there of uh, a godly sorrow when you continue in the Lord. And that, that has a perfect work. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I'm, I'm learning that. <laughs> you know, I've been sorrowful. And I've needed to repent. I've needed to change things in my life. I've needed to um, let things go. And I, I see the grace of God, the mercy of God, and let, just giving me the, the opportunity to do so. Let me do it. You know, and, and that's... that's <laughs> That's the Father. That's how he, he sought us out so we could do that. Amen. Um, our God prepared himself a body like ours and became a curse for us so that we might live before him in truth and righteousness in the beauty of holiness by the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 11 it says, for thus says the Lord God, indeed I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. Verse 12, as the shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered. <clears throat> On a cloudy and dark day. This just amazes me. It amazes me how God is, is he, he's been saying it way before Christ. What he would do in Christ. What he would do in the Messiah when the Messiah would come. Right. So that we would have salvation. God sought us out. Individually, and wrote on our hearts songs of deliverance. That's why we have so much music in the world today. Christian music. Um, this is why we worship Him. Uh, we love Him. Why we exalt Him. Why we honor Him. Uh, it's why we walk with Him. Uh, it's why we speak of Him. Because He sought us out first. While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And to end this, I uh, just want to say this. Uh, the spirit and soul of man, as influenced by the Holy Spirit, must worship God. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, maybe you know it may not be the outward part, the type of person who just all out there, but inside you you just yes. boiling over yeah. uh, with affection towards the Lord. Yeah. Uh, the, um, if, uh, a man as influenced by the Holy Spirit uh, must worship God and have communion with Him. Spiritual affections. Um, as shown in fervent prayers, your prayer life. All this is worship. Mm -hmm. All this is worship. When you fall down, that's actually the meaning of worship, fall prostrate on the face. I see she's ready to do it all the time. She worshiping. Boom. Supplications and thanksgivings uh, from the worship of, worship of an upright heart, uh, which God delights and is glorified. God is glorified through what he done and what he does in us and through us. 
Mm -hmm. um, when he sees us here worshiping, he's just like, well, it, it doesn't surprise him because he did it. <laughs> but, you know, for us as his creatures uh, who have free will, uh, we have the ability to make our own choices. Um, for us to choose him and then watch, watch his, his power work in us, you know, um, I know he smiles. He walks with us. He's like, yeah, I'm in here. Like I say, he walks along the lap saying, I'm in here, homie. Samuel. You know, <laughs> and he's touching me. He's ministering to each heart. Uh, whatever we need as we worship him. Um, mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> finally, just say, uh, just keep saying the word. Mm -hmm. Fall in love with God. Mm -hmm. When you're in your word, that's what you're doing. You're falling in love with him. And honor him for who he is. Um, and your worship will flow uh, as you experience God in your life. From the smallest thing to the biggest thing in your life. Because um, he's there for it all. Amen. Amen. after someone but I, I love that part that he said about he is seeking such to worship him yeah. you know and when you know the thing that God needs you know he provided everything we need at the cross uh -huh. everything thereafter is our response to it he's seeking such to worship him he's seeking such to who's going to respond to that yes. is that going to mean something to you is that going to mean something that it radically shifts your life and totally transforms every bit of who you are. So that you run after him with everything that you got. That's our core. That's our choice. And that's what we get to do. That's worship. How we respond. That's our choice. Stand with me if you will. You know, kind of just piggybacking again on what he said about our choice and our response. He said, "Self, and I love it, man. I'm just uh, uh, my, my heart was so glad to hear what he had said about how salvation is like ongoing, it's perpetual, synonymous with deliverance. You know, we people like to, you know, attribute deliverance with demonic deliverance, like demonic possession, and I think that's totally applicable." But people kind of overlook the deliverance that we need, the ongoing, continual salvation that we need. You know, you can take the man out of Egypt, but you still got to take the Egypt out of the man. You know, and that's an ongoing process. And praise God for his mercy. And some, sometimes we need to continue to step forward in him. You know, God's going to challenge us in ways. The Holy Spirit I know, the Jesus I preach, the Jesus that I know, is he's going to always continually move us and grow us in his grace and his mercy yes. always in a loving kind generous way but he is good amen church amen. Amen. father we just pray over this uh, body lord each and every soul under the sound of our voice lord god we just pray lord that uh, the words today would fall on fertile ground that seed would be cast upon good soil god and that it would produce a harvest Lord, a harvest of worship. Lord, a harvest that produces a song. A harvest that produces lifestyle changes. A harvest that produces lifestyle uh, choices that would glorify and honor you. Lord, that we would be a people that would be known to have been with Jesus. Our lives would be so radically shifted there would be so much fruit of the Spirit pouring out of us. 
that people know that something has changed in us. That our outward expression would be evident by an inward change. Lord, I pray that you have your way in these people. God, I pray that the reign of the Spirit falls over these hearts, Lord, that it would bring forth that harvest. Lord, the reign of the Spirit, Lord, over this place, over hearts, over minds, Lord, that it would fall on that ground, Lord, and they would quickly produce, quickly produce good fruit. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for who you are simply in our lives. For we have tasted and seen that you are good. In Jesus' mighty name and his church said,